Hey guys, this is Post Martin, and uh, today I want to talk about uh, electricity. Sadly, a good friend of mine, probably best friend of mine in Nepal, got an electric shock while playing guitar, and um, yeah, that's pretty serious. And uh, that's why I decided I want to make a video about electrical hazards that you might face as a musician. Explain you what's going on with electricity and your gear, what can happen and what you should do to prevent from something like that happening ever again. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Okay, so here we have two wires coming from the power plant to your house, to your wall socket, and uh, there's plenty of electrons waiting to do the job, whatever you want to power by using your 230 volt uh, electricity. There's the power waiting for you. But currently nothing is happening because the current needs to flow somewhere. For example, into a light bulb. Yeah, And if you connect this light bulb and like this, you have a perfect circuit. Then inside this light bulb there is a resistor which consumes electric energy and makes the light uh, light up and make your dark room really bright. And now a current is flowing, relatively small current because this is not such a strong lamp, yeah? but still there's an electrical current flowing. But if we don't have anything connected, there's nothing happening. Now what happens if we short circuit, if we just use a metal wire to connect these both? then there's basically no resistance, so the electrons can flow crazy fast, and what happens is it will basically melt the plastic insulation and it will even melt the cable, the wire, the metal wire, until the connection is interrupted again. And this will go really fast because 230 volts, there is plenty of power waiting for you. All right, so if there is a short circuit, we should take some measures that this doesn't happen, that the plastic and the metal wire doesn't melt. So what we do is basically we use this kind of circuit breaker. Yeah, In your house, maybe you have these old fuses that will melt. If there's too much power going through them, there's a little wire inside and it will melt and then protect the wires here in your in installation or your, your gear, whatever you connect, it will protect the technical equipment a little bit. Because if it exceeds the power that it is rated for, for example, in this case, this one here, this circuit breaker will uh, have a um, current capacity of 16 ampere, which equals like 3,680 watts or something, so there's plenty of power ready for you. But if you exceed that, the circuit breaker will just say, ah, that's too much for me, and just disconnect everything, yeah? Now the problem is that uh, this will only release at 16 ampere, or 3,680 watts, or, or more, then it will react. And even a fraction of this electrical power will be already be able to kill you easily. Yeah, so this will never protect you. Yeah, neither this kind of fuse. If you have this in your house, or if you have this circuit breaker in your house, they will not protect you from anything happening to you if you get an electric shock. For example, if I touch these both here with my fingers. The current will run through my body and through the other finger and from there back to the plant. And my body is not like metal. It's not a perfect um, conductor. So I have a body resistance. Like, for example, right now it's pretty hot here. My skin is a little bit kind of moist, uh, wet. So my body resistance may be 1000 ohm or something like that. So there will be quite a bit of current running through my body, but not enough to switch off the circuit breaker. So there we have a problem. Hmm. <clears throat> now let's go a little bit further and see what happens if we have 
a beautiful guitar amp. Yeah, and uh, there is Mr. Happy Guitarist waiting to play guitar, and he connects his guitar. Yeah, let's just assume that this is an electric guitar here, and we have connected it. Now let's assume that there is inside the, the power amp, everything is fine, as it should, yeah, and we switch the amp on, guitar is connected, guitar player starts to play and enjoys life. Very nice, beautiful. But what happens if there is a problem inside, an electrical problem inside? For example, this wire that carries all the electricity, all the energy, somewhere inside touches the metal chassis of the guitar amp. Yeah, There is a metal chassis inside, like a box, where all these uh, electronic pieces are uh, kind of mounted to. Hmm, what happens? Now, right now, probably nothing happens, because there's just a dangerous voltage here. Yeah, But there is lacquer, and there's plastic knobs, so nothing would happen probably. But the big issue is, with this guitar cable here, it's connected to the chassis ground, to the chassis here. So basically, of this cable, let's get rid of this little guitarist. This sleeve here is connected to the metal chassis of the amp. So if there is some sort of short circuit, or if there is some kind of uh, leakage inside, voltage leakage inside, and the metal chassis of the amp is ready to provide you with electrical current that can kill you, it will be here. And uh, let me just take this ukulele for a second. Just imagine that would be an electrical guitar or electric guitar. Once we connect it, let me just quickly put the plug in. So <clears throat> now imagine we have a metal bridge and we have metal strings. Yeah. And all of these would be connected to the chassis of the amp. And if there is something in terms of electricity waiting for you, once you touch the strings or you touch the bridge or even the tuners, you get an electric shock. That's very dangerous. Now, as I told you before, this circuit breaker will only disconnect if there is a massive amount of energy going. If you touch here now with there being an electric fault and we switch on the amp and there is an electrical fault inside, this will likely not be enough to turn off this breaker. Because my body has a resistance and there will be, yeah, maybe, I don't know, let's say 0 0.2 amps or something, or maybe 0 0.4 amps, whatever, depends a little bit on how I am touching the ground, how wet my skin is, yeah? It will never be enough to switch that off because here we need 16 ampere and already 0 0.04 amps or something like that so a really small amount of electrical current can already kill you yeah okay <clears throat> so what do we do first thing we should consider is sadly i know in nepal most installations or often i see that there's only two wires in your wall plug and that poses a big danger, because if we had three wires, this one is called protective earth. And this, if we have a three-pin prong in the wall socket, one of them should be the protected earth. And this is connected to the metal chassis. And if there's basically a zero ohm resistance, there's no resistance at all. So if there comes the electricity, for some problem, it goes into the metal chassis, and from the metal chassis here, there's basically no resistance. There will be a, a huge current flowing that is enough to switch the breaker off. Sadly, this circuit breaker, or these kind of circuit breakers, and even less this fuse, will react fast. It will take a few seconds. If you have bad luck, it will take a few seconds to switch off. Or maybe it's just a voltage leakage, so it's not like full power going there. It's just enough to kill you, but not enough to release this. So this is some level of protection 
if you have all your equipment basically grounded properly to ground earth with this protective earth, the third wire, very important, yeah? And even if you don't have it, there is a solution, and that is called RCD, and I will show you now. This here is an RCD, a residual current device. And what does this, this residual current device do? Let's just assume that we have the proper three wire, yeah? So if there is a massive current because of an electrical fault inside your guitar amp, or because you are touching here, whatever, yeah? If there is something going on, then the current will flow into the amp and, for example, through your fingers to earth. And this device measures the difference between brown and blue, in this case, yeah, brown and blue wire. So usually, if nothing is wrong, everything is fine, and the amp is like, uh, I don't know, it consumes like 2 ampere electrical current, then there will be 2 ampere flowing into the guitar amp and back through the blue wire, also two amps. So it will basically be the same current on both. But if for some reason, some of this voltage is going directly to ground because I have an issue inside the amp and some of the electricity goes through my body, then, for example, there will be two amps, uh, two ampere flowing into the amp, but on this blue wire, only 1.9 amp are coming back because the other 0.1 amp go through my body. And this difference, this device will detect the difference, and if they are not same, it will bam, switch off. And it will switch off at a difference of 30 milliamps, so 0.03 amps it will already detect, and it will switch off within 0.1 seconds, so it will switch off very fast. And this is the only device that will actually protect you and your body and your life. If you don't have an RCD, you are risking your life every single day. And not only in your house, in your electrical installation, this is made for electrical fixed installation inside a house, but there's also kind of wall plugs that include RCD device. And there's even, if it's connected, there's even a test button here, which you can press, and then it should immediately, bam, switch off. Yeah, This is for testing, because this is what protects your life. So if you have such a device, you should frequently test it if it actually works, and then you can feel safe. Safe in terms of you will still get an electric shock, yeah, because it will only switch off after you get the electric shock, but it will be very fast. Yeah, it will switch off within 0.1 seconds, and that's very important to have. So if you play at home, make sure you get an RCD. If you play at any venue, open air or any kind of fixed venue, make sure they have an RCD. If you are unsure, get one. Get one to connect your equipment to be safe. And just to be sure, this is not only an issue with electric guitar players. This can also happen to, for example, singers. When a micro microphone stand or the microphone goes to a microphone preamp and there's some whatever, or DI box or whatever, there is an electrical problem happening on stage. Many things can happen. There's lights, there's power amps. There's lots of electricity going on. If there is no residual current device somewhere to protect you, you can easily kill yourself. Especially now in monsoon season where everything is kind of humid, moist, or even worse, if it's raining hard, this kind of uh, water reduces resistance. And there, if there is some kind of voltage leakage here inside somewhere or some water going inside, it can really turn out very bad for you, and uh, I don't want this to happen. So guys, please, 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 inform yourself about these kind of residue current devices. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me if you need any more help, and go to an electrician who is an actual expert, and not these kind of crazy guys who, who uh, connect their drills with only two wires to the wall plug. Yeah. 
just be safe, please. And I uh, hope this video helped a little bit to understand what the problem is and how to solve it. Make sure you have three wires connected, including protective earth. Make sure you have an RCD. And that's it for it. Uh, <laughs> that's it for now. And I wish you a happy musician's life without any of these issues. And uh, of course, I wish my best friend all the best that he recovers. And uh, it shouldn't have happened. Oh my God. And it should not happen to anyone else. Okay. Cheers, guys. See you.